Grew up in a family where sports was on the TV, the radio. My uncles always had basketball on and there were huge LA sports fans. I loved Magic Johnson. I loved Cheryl Miller. I wanted to play with the boys. I wanted to do what boys did. And my parents' eyes are like, oh, Shay's just athletic. And that was nothing more thought behind it. A reason I dove so hard into athletics was because it also hid a, a piece of me that was a large piece of me. What pronouns do you use? They, them. I'm assigned female at birth, an AFAB. An AFAB is the abbreviation for assigned female at birth. This abbreviation is useful when someone's gender identity differs from the sex they were identified as having at birth. I am non-binary, MB, MB trans. A non-binary person is someone with a gender identity and or gender expression falling outside the binary gender categories of man and woman. While trans is short for transgender, used to describe people whose gender identity differs from the sex they were assigned at birth. So many people can be confused by that, and that's understandable. But I don't fall within either of the binary. I want to express myself however I want to. Sometimes that might be presenting more masculine. Sometimes it might be throwing a little feminine twist on it. Like, it doesn't matter. When the 2023-24 NBA season began, Shea Flores became the first out non-binary transgender official in all major U.S. sports. But Shea's journey to self-discovery began as a teenager, grappling with their sexual orientation. My family were, at the time, practicing Catholics. I was like, I can't um, be expressive of who I am because I'm thinking in my head too, well, I, I'm not gonna be going to heaven, that's for sure. It never, it never dawned on me that she was different. I think during the end of high school, I started going into college. That's when uh, I noticed things were happening. But we never really talked about it, you know? I don't know how long I probably would have had who I truly was, but I wrote a love letter to my first girlfriend and uh, my sister gave it to my mom. <laughs> so yeah, right? Estaba confundida, bien confundida, no entendía. Cómo se están hablando, no entiendo. Ah, oh, mi hija es gay. I remember my mom and my dad were, sit me, sat me down in the, in the living room and my dad's like, uh, you know, baby, you just didn't, you just could have told us and making it seem very easy to do. And then my mom was like, I knew I shouldn't have put you in sports. <laughs> and I just like, literally, I, I shouted out at her. That is not why I am gay. Cheryl Flory's number 10 is checked in. And here's Shea played two years of college basketball at Cal State Northridge. After graduating in 2003, they began officiating high school games. Shea's big break came in 2009 when they joined the NBA's developmental league. I could not let the day go by without throwing some love to the officiating crew who is made up of all women. Probably in my mid thirties, I was like, okay, I'm really not being um, totally truthful with who I am with myself and my family. And being discouraged with having that second conversation, like, how is my family going to react? Shay viene to me and me dice, mamá, tengo que hablar. Go, sí, hija, con qué, mija, qué pasa. Yo quiero decirte que yo soy non-binary. At first, I was like, okay, what's the difference? You're right. And then she explained it to me, you know, about the, uh, you know, they and them, and it's still hard to this day. And she, you know, she, they, they corrects me, so, you know. Then I had this other thing, which was my career, which was keeping me from also being truthful. By 2022, Shea had 13 years of combined experience refereeing in the NCAA 
G League, and WNBA, and was the only person to officiate a championship game at all three levels. But Shea says they felt unsettled. They were out as a gay person professionally and publicly, but they felt they needed to share more after the NBA hired them as a full-time ref in 2022. I get hired in the NBA, and um, I think that, well, I know the press release that came out with two additional women getting hired. At that point, I was like, okay, this is where it stops. Shay expressed to me that they felt it was time to own themselves publicly, to claim themselves publicly for how they viewed themselves. We haven't made an official announcement, but in any internal documents and everything that goes out, Shay is no longer in our media guide being identified as a woman. I'm just surprised that it's been welcoming. My colleagues, some of them, they don't even, nothing to talk about. Some of them are interested and have questions. Some of them have had conversations about their their own families. It was important to me because, one, I wanted to be seen the right way. Two, representation. There weren't many people or anybody actually when I was young who I could identify with in a way. It's really amazing to see this person, Shay, as a queer person, as a non-binary person, as a trans person, like commanding respect from these huge sports figures, right? These like men who I think like embody masculinity in this very um, traditional way. Why so many pictures? Oh, shit! You better turn that page. Oh. Wait. <laughs> I felt like it was literally overnight, but it wasn't. It was a few years after I came out to my family that my mom was just like, I, it's okay. I just, I love, I love, I love you for who you are. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise who you are is wrong. Love yourself and be yourself. 